Hello, everybody. Hello. And thank you for being here. Um, excuse me for my slides, but really, one of my mantra is to break the rules when the rules are broken. And so I don't like very much PowerPoint or Keynote. And uh, that's why I'm drawing my slides every time. So it's uh, yesterday I spent the day draw drawing. And um, I saw the fact that I'm, I'm Francesco and I'm uh, CEO and co-CEO co and co-founder of a, a real company in Italy, which is called Mundora, which has had an happy an end by uh, being sold to Team System, which is owned by a fund. And uh, they bought us because we are as we are. And I'm, today I'm going to present to you how we work and uh, how these uh, things are reflecting to the architecture of software we build. I was one of the first Scrum Master practitioner in Europe. So it's, uh, it's 17 year. So it was 2002, I uh, got the certification with directly with Ken Schwader. So I really understand what is Scrum. And, uh, and in the company, we took Scrum to the next level. And I really love the key panel of uh, Alistair Coburn, because really we are on, on the same page. So the first thing I want to, to there's a good thing uh, to, to tell you that is uh, Mel Conway say, do you know what is with Mel Conway? Yep. Yes. Orga organizational culture is reflecting on, on the software you're building and uh, we are touching this every day, every time. So we do software, we do uh, everything, as, as a CEO, I say, just to be invoiced, okay? I, I, I build everything. And uh, when you, it's, it's weird when you're requested to build a scalable, re reliable, resilient, uh, on the cloud or whatever, safe distributed, um, self-healing or uh, whatever software with the bleeding te te technology like micro container, Kubernetes, and all the things you can really put as ingredient. It's really weird where who is asking you these things are, are, are also building a company which is not resilient, which is not cohesive, which is not reliable, which is, which is quite scalable or whatever. And it's very, uh, to me, it's very weird. And I see lots of times this kind of approach. So there are toxic company I see around software development company, but also customers. They are really toxic. And they are, and the software, the outcome we produce is really toxic too. So in Mundora, we, Mundora is the company. So I, I'm telling this, a bit of story of the company, but it's really, in, in, it's important. Because it's uh, <laughs> it's um, it's why I'm here. In Mondora, we started thinking about why are, are we working. Every, nowadays, everyone is talking about know-how. You have to work on the know-how of things. And uh, for your career path, you have to increase your know-how. But really, no one or few bunch of people are talking about the know why. And the question, and you, you always, you, you, you can ask yourself this question, why I'm working? Why am, am, am I doing this job? Why? I'm giving my time here to that people, to that customer, to the community, to whatever. It was, it, 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 we asked us this, several years ago, and we say, why? It's, uh, I, I took the, 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 the note from a, a carbon saying, you, uh, am I sticking my finger in the world? I want to stick my finger in the world. So, which is the purpose? Why I'm working? And uh, we moved the idea of a company as a profit company to the idea of a mixture between com profit and non-profit company. So we are here to create positive impact for the world. We are here to serve the world. That's important. That's a statement, a big statement of companies. And it's, it's, there's a big movement in the world, which is called benefit corporations, 
born in the US and landed in Europe several years ago, where companies can declare how they are putting their finger in the world, how healthy, how healthy can be the, the space where they can be. So, and, and we asked ourselves, and uh, the, the, the answer was easy, and we say we want to create a really, you know, what is uh, in French, liberté, fraternité, and égalité. Someone lost their head for that three words. But really, and we say, we want to create a liberté and fraternité and an égalité space for all the stakeholders, including colleagues, customers, and all the things. So we started reasoning on the know why. Imagine if you, if you understand very well the impact the software you are creating for the world. Imagine in doing, serving a purpose, and maybe you know that writing that line of codes, drawing that architecture is going to save life. A life, just only one. Wow, that's a big purpose we are serving. Imagine the culture of the company, where we are thinking, we are really changing the world in the direction we want to be. I, I, I always say, build the future as you want to be. Live in the future you want to be. Build the present as you want to be. Having this idea, as founders of the company, we, we, we really changed all the things inside the company, or moved Scrum to the next level, and brought, because if you think Scrum is a purpose-driven approach, who is familiar with Scrum? Who is not familiar with Scrum? Who, who is not familiar with Scrum? All you understand what is Scrum. So we need to bring self-management to so, something bigger than um, serving a customer objectives. We need to bring self-management self to bring some, some, something bigger to serve. So that's why we started working on... Uh, on uh, we, we put the company... The company now is uh, 70 people, 7-0 seven, seven people. So it's not small, it's not big, but it's interesting number. And uh, we say, okay, while we are serving a purpose, we really want to self-manage ourselves. So we have an handbook. We, have, uh, we don't have rules. We don't have an ethical code of conduct, for example. But really, people do whatever they want, when they want, from where they want. Because all of us are serving a purpose. Uh, it it's, can sound a bit ut utopistic, but really, think about if you are doing whatever you want, whenever you, of course, compatible with the company mission and with the customer's objectives, but if you do whatever you want, whenever you want, and where you want, think about how you're free to act. Think about how this is, going, this is culture, how you are going to, ser to serve something more, and how it is going to reflect the architecture you're building, the software you're building. That's, that's a different approach. And think about customer. We have only big customers, insurance companies, banks, investors, family offices, and others. Think about customers. And we, when, when we go to a customer, we say, hey, Mr. Customer, I know I have to provide you an ERP solution, for example, but why are we doing this? Can we specifically describe the outcome for a better world? Can we be interdependent, for example, to save trees in the world? And they say yes. If you want to go more in detail about this, we have, a, we have, we have, we have br broken the idea of discount to customer. And of course, if you, if you have to work, you have to do a discount, at least in South Europe. And uh, while doing a discount, you can commit also your customer to be braver for the world instead of uh, receiving just a discount. So we are taking this difference of discount as a bet. We are betting for a better world. It's interesting. But really, think about also customer mind. How is it changing? Uh, we have a customer who saves trees. We have uh, customers who saves plastic glasses 
for the coffee ma in the coffee machine. So you know, we are Italian and we are addicted to coffee. So it's uh, it's it's uh, interesting. And think about really people again. If we sign an agreement, people have a, a specific impact inside the company. So I know why I'm working. I, I know which is my know why path, and you know that the customers know all the customers know also why they are working. So the impact they are creating. Think about the mindset of of the people working inside the company, which is a totally different mindset than working only for a salary. That working only for money. Of course, money are important. So we need to work. We need to get money to sustain ourselves. But really, think about to move this to the next step. To think about to stick the, the fingers inside the world and have the opportunity inside the company to stick these fingers. So this is of course a game changer because it's flipped down. Who is leading the company is uh, the purpose. And uh, who's really managing the company are all the people inside the company. So the, we, we, the collaboration, it's really a, a, a really big statement in, uh, in, uh, in our culture. We need to collaborate. We are really dispersed over Europe, and we have a colleague also in Tokyo. But really, it's important to find a way to work together and, let me use this word, serve the purpose we are serving or we accepted or we are agreed. Think about, and, and think about a pyramid. On the top of the pyramid, there is also always the, or the shareholders or the executive or the board, but there's the executive, the CEO. Think about the pyramid. In top of the pyramid, in our case, there is the purpose. The purpose that, that and, and the purpose is really leading us to the to the to the next step. And but but we have also a board of directors. I sit in the board of directors. I'm the co-CEO. We are two, two to be resilient. <laughs> you know, and I think about the idea of board, the board of director. We are serving, and we are creating a new culture for serving the company. It's like a waiter. It's like being the guest of a company. I really love the idea of servant leadership and guest leadership. I act as a guest. So if some, I, I'm not ordering, I'm, I'm not, we are not in a command and control scheme, of course, because who is, common, who is the commander is the purpose. We are service for us and for the customer. Remove the waste of plastic on a specific customer and create a relation of uh, freedomness, um, brotherhood, and uh, equity with the, with, the, with the st all the stakeholders. They are, or are, we are serving this purpose. So everything is changing. So it's like, with a technical, with a pro developer, it's like doing the inversion of control of the things, IOC, do you remember? We are doing the IOC of the things. So instead of control, that was, can be one of my position. No, no, I want to serve. What is going to happen? I want to serve my colleagues. I want to serve my customer. I want, like, like as a waiter. Which is really, and, and uh, it's, it's really a different approach of a, an executive. And it's going to create the culture of serve. We are serving everybody to do things. Think about just what the first thing I want to, sh to tell you. If you put this culture inside your company, isn't it something similar to a service architecture? <clears throat> it's interesting. Because if, if, if you think about, yes, everything must be in service of something, and if it is in, inside the, the culture, if it is uh, embedded in the culture of the company, so everybody is uh, trying to help, everybody is trying to serve. We will talk later about how we manage retrospective, agile retrospective in, the, in this idea also. But really think about, oh, I want to build a service architecture. Yes, but you are in a command and control structure. 
how can you do a service architecture if you are in a command and control structure? It's, it's, that's, it sounds to be weird, but if you are really in a service um, company, service-oriented company, let me use this word, you really create, and this is reflecting, of course there's no training materials on this, because it's culture, because every day you have a colleague which is making coffee for you. <laughs> you're, you're not asking coffee, you're not asking to go to coffee. I have a colleague, Alessandro, which is getting, stepping into the office and uh, making the coffee with the mocha, because we are Italian, and uh, serving the company to the rest of the, of the, of the, of the mates. Interesting. It's a really a game changer. Again, if we think about shareholders, they are serving the, the board of director, and they, they, they want, of course, you know what is a share, the, the, the main objectives of shareholder is uh, to get much more capital they invested. But in the case of us, this, the shareholder doesn't want only the, the, the capital, the money back, they want also to know how it is the impact we are creating in the world. So it's, it's interesting, and they are serving us. So if I need much more money, I'm not asking for more money because we have plenty of money. Well, it's a happy problem. But really, if we need to ask more money, we go there and say, we want to create much more impact on that, on that specific field, and they invest. It's interesting. So, we are flipped down. That's a, 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 a brief introduction that we have flipped down all the company, a normal company structure, and we have created, and we are working or living in a different completely different culture company. And the good thing is that we are not alone. There are plenty of companies around the world which are working in the same way or similar way. So we are not alone. So that's... <laughs> uh, I was kidding, so, so kidding. So I use a class diagram <laughs> to, to draw this and instead of having a pyramid. But really, the, the good thing is, is everything is in everything, the purpose of, of, of the things we do. So it's, a, it's, it's really important for me to work on the know-why instead of working on the know-how. Again, and then now, I'm, 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 imagine you have a, you're working in a, in, the, in a company like this. What, what is happening? What is happening in uh, what is where is driving this kind of culture inside uh, inside a specific company? So, for example, we I, I, I'll, I'll give you some practices. These are I thought these as components of a company. Yeah, I'm a bit geek, a bit nerd sometimes. Think about we, if we are serving a purpose, we don't need to have hide our salaries, right? So the money we get from the company. So one time, one day, a colleague, uh, Amedeo, started with a Google spreadsheet and say, I'm Amedeo, and uh, my salary is poof. And then the second colleagues, and then the third, and so on. And I was the fifth. And they discovered one important thing. The, I was not one, my salary was not the biggest one. Of, of the company, so it was a, nice, a, a very nice surprise for all my colleagues. But really, it's interesting to see how all the 95% of the company is sharing the salary. And uh, of course, you share the salary is not us forcing you to share the, to share the salaries. But really, it's, uh, it's, it's interesting because uh, if, you sh if you open salaries, you can open accounts like the balance, but the balance sheet. We are owned now by a fund, by a fund which is Alman and Friedman, and they 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 want the PNL every month. So they want us to uh, control, strictly control the company money, and we do that. It's easy, but we are not doing that for uh, the fund. We are mostly doing that for for a specific. Uh, the reason, because we want to share that with the colleagues, with all the mates, because everybody must be informed of the uh, finances of the company. And this is, uh, think about, this is openness. In fact, it's a concrete idea of openness. 
Whereas well, there's a big movement in the world which is saying, hey, open, you must be open, which is the open source movement, right? But really, again, it's culture. We say we have open salaries. We, in, uh, we have open accounts then. We have an open PNL. We have a, you, you know, when working agile, you work with the, in teams. Think a big, the big opportunity in that case, where we have the cost, which are mostly the salaries. In our case, we are a service, service company, so we have the the, 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 the the cost and also the revenue because the colleagues talk directly with customers. There's no, no, no intermediation of a key account of a manager or whatever. It's really changing the culture. It's really changing the way people think. And they have, of course, it opened us to, um, to really be, continuously be open and uh, improve ourselves in a, in, a, in a really continued inspection adaptation mechanism. And, and this is making people uh, every day better because they understand the role of CFO, discussing with customer, for example. They are going to create the ability to negotiation and, and all the things because they will. And again, if they are struggling with something, we are, here, we are there to serve. So lots of time, uh, if, you, if you receive an email from me, you see as my signature, a message that say you can book me. So they are booking my agenda, I'm not booking their agenda. It's, it's different. Again, it's the inversion of control. The idea of having open salaries removes the idea of, of budgets. Do you have budgets inside your company? Do you have budget inside your family? You have budget? Teeth care budget? Or uh, um, other things, the grocery budget. Really? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, my, half of the, of the code my, my colleagues develop is open source. Even customers are asking for closed source code, but really libraries or whatever, they are uh, released as open source. And the customers know. And think about the quality of the software. When you are putting, when you are, when you are hiring someone, you are going to GitHub before, and you are going to see the, the, how he is going to write code. It's better than LinkedIn. Going to GitHub and and see how this uh, how this person is working. If you, del if you uh, commit software, if you push software on GitHub, you have to improve quality because it's your face. Because it's you, it's not the brand you're working for, which, you, which is very good, and, but it's you. So Amedeo is going to push uh, his clients on GitHub and, uh, and saying, hey, what is reflecting? It's reflecting to the quality. It's reflecting to... Uh, be a really good engineer because it's, it's our phase. Think about, we already spoken about uh, um, servant leadership. Think about servant, we, we in, in the company we are six, 70 people and in the company we have also two weird people. One is a philosophist and one is a psychologist. Well, a psychologist not for mental illness, of course, Okay, we buy, it as a we buy it as a service. Psychologist is because he, we need to collaborate, and we, collaboration is the key topic. We need to collaborate, and we need also to work also to work on our the way we talk. It's like working on the protocol. So it's, there is a movement called nonviolent communication, and we do meeting, talking, and understanding what is nonviolent communication. And so everyone, and the philosophy again, the, the philosopher is, is another thing. So she, she's working in a, in a different way. But really, think about being a servant leader, and this is a, in the culture of the company. Everybody is serving somebody that is going to serve somebody that is going to be, can be a software. And uh, the result of this is really to have uh, everything with an API. 
It's interesting because you're used to serve, uh, to serve things. Hmm? Another thing we do, it's, uh, and uh, um, um, th there are two, thi two, two important things now. If we are here to serve, uh, we can do mistakes. What do you do when, you, when you're doing a mistake? Depends on the mistake, of course. And uh, some of cases, I'm hiding the mistakes, like hiding under the carpet things. But really, if we are in a, in a process where we are learning, are we learning from hiding things? It could be the Italian way. Or are we learning in another, in another way? Are we learning just only from mistakes? It's important. And, and of course, it's hard to understand because we are used not to tell the mistakes we have done, but really you can create again a culture on, on doing this. So we started celebrating, 10 years ago, we started on the celebration of mistakes or failure, doing the failure parties. So we, we say, we smile to success. Yes, success is good, good PNL, perfect. But really the, the important things we do is uh, celebrate fa fa uh, failures. At the beginning we do the, the failure pizza, but think about having 30 people every week going out for dinner for a pizza, so it was too much. So we do this, the, the failure party, party, we put in the, in the office, in all the, the office we have, high stand table where someone can bring a bottle of wine and uh, it, it can say, hey, um, I have done this, 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 I'm learning this, 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 I need help on this. And this is a, again, it's culture. And uh, this is the way you can test new, you, you can innovate, you can test new framework or meet a framework or other things like that. But really, you have the opportunity to really say, hey, I want to drink some alcohol. And, and listen, alcohol helps. <laughs> which is, a, a, have you ever known about AOP? which is not aspect-oriented programming, which is alcohol-oriented programming. Hmm? <laughs> but <laughs> it's, 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 this, is, this is the way we are enable this type of programming, of course, which is culture, again. Okay. But, uh, so celebrate failures, first of all. Be free to do whatever you want. Be free to, free to innovate. Be free to, to use that specific service on the cloud. So since you, we have open books, you go and say, hey, I'm wasting the money of the company. Okay, on, celebra on, on failure celebration, I have a big topic to talk to you because uh, one day we lost ATK, but it's not time here. And we celebrated it in a di different way than drinking. But uh, uh, if you want later, I can talk to you directly how, how we solve the problem of ATK lost. Another things we do, <coughs> again, thinking about a resilient system, if we think about a flood managed company, think about a retrospective, you know what, what are retrospectives? You run retrospectives? Yeah. Okay, every two weeks? Yeah. Every, every month? Yeah. Every day, wow, yeah. wow. So you spend the day by doing retrospective. <laughs> um, we do retrospective every two weeks. The, the good thing is, you know, with this kind of culture, with retrospective, the aim of retrospective is uh, to learn something. And, uh, and for us, is to celebrate also something. The, the, the good things we, the, our, my colleagues uh, uh, um, have discovered is uh, during retrospective, you can really do something more, you can bring ret retrospective to a next level. So if someone is struggling in, in, in something, for example, I'm not good in power speaking, uh, in power speaking and I was in f facing the customers and uh, really was, was a shame. And other colleagues can say, hey, I can help you. And uh, I want to bring you from zero to hero, and maybe from hero to superhero. And, uh, and uh, the colleagues who, him, who is going to help is writing, the, writing an email with the subject L-O-I, letter of interdependence, 
with the, with the specific, I want to help you in becoming good in poor speaking. And then it's going to write what is going to happen for the next three months in a specific time and how it's going to help him or her. It's interesting because you see lots of retrospectives coming out with uh, these LOI letters, which are really create a resilient company, which is the side effect of having a culture like this, having a, a resilient system. Because software, we, we have a lot of chatbot deployed, checking the health of services around the company, and uh, scaling up, down, and you know, all the things that all the, all the DevOps geeks, uh, geeks are, doing, are doing. And uh, so it's, um, for, for another thing we do, it's, uh, we, of course, we have lots of things. The things we do is, uh, we, we were talking about money. You know what is an MBO? Management by objectives, where the company is giving you an objective. But really, in the culture of the company, we say, no, 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 that's, it's, it's, that's the problem of stick and carrots, you know? You, you put a carrots in front of a horse, it's going to run, and with the sticks, you're making the, 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 the horse run faster. So the, the things we do is re really say, you know, we, we have to put MBOs on our teams, so we have money flowing in it. In, we have, we have um, uh, uh, MBOs, but on teams, and the money are coming, they have an expiry date where our team is going to self-manage this money. So if they are going to self-redistribute this, uh, this money, in that specific time, money flows away. Yes, thank you, mates, I'm not distributing money. And because they come into my pockets. <laughs> I'm kidding. Another thing we do is, uh, is work on MBI. MBI is a management by impact. You, for example, we have a program called Cycle to, Cycle to Work, where people are committing to cycling to work instead of going by car. And uh, if they cycle to work, they get 20 cents per kilometer as they run. So it's a, it, it, which is managing, management by impact. Of course, we have to track everything we do. It, it, we have s several types of impact. Of course, you can describe your own impact you want to create. And uh, we have to matter everything, which is good. Think about a software architecture that is going to log everything. Now, GDPR compliant. And think about the culture. We are metering everything. The, we, uh, we are metering also the happiness of the company. We have a survey running every week. Five questions, um, 60 seconds of answer in time is. And we, we, we know we have a, the, a graph, a trend that say how we are happy. If we are going up and down. Now we are going up. Before holiday, no. Summer vacation, no. But really, it's, uh, and, and what is going to create inside the, the, the mind of people? The idea of a matter everything, which is strictly related thinking about software to quality management and to logging everything. So it's a, it's a completely different approach. And uh, of course, there's, there are, these are only some uh, example on how you, we are building a different company. And, uh, and uh, in, a, in a new modern approach, or let me say, uh, building a new normal company on doing things. So, and the good things having this old data, we really implement things like uh, artificial intelligence on, based on reasoning on these data, machine learning and all the things, or reactive systems, chatbots, that, that are using these data and React, which is a learning company which is a learning architecture. I decide to scale up because I'm seeing that the, the performance is going down and the customer budget is going up because you, you matter everything. You matter the value you're creating. I'm, I'm, the story is very big, but really the, 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 the things I want to tell you is, uh, with, is that with small steps, we, we really can Im improve inside the company. We, Having the idea of uh, why we are working, uh, of, of being ourselves, no matter what they say, is singing stings. Sing, uh, sting, yes. 
we, have, we, have the, we are in 2020 now, more or less, and we have the, really the option to be free to be, and to work for a specific focus, which is not only money. We have to serve something. We have to work on our know why. Okay, the story is very long because everything is going to reflect, and Mel Conway is right. If you are in a monolith culture, you build a monolith architecture, you build a monolith solution, which is unworkable. You have to throw away. You cannot throw away your life. So you have to live in a different way, and, uh, the, the, and, and you can check what is happening on the artifacts you are building. That's the story I, want to, I wanted to tell you. And last quote, quote is uh, from Peter Drucker, is culture, that's culture. It's, it's not a set of practice you read on a manual, it's culture. Culture, really, it's strategy for lunch, maybe, or for breakfast before. And this is what we are, we are doing and demonstrating. The happy end of uh, my story is uh, that an American fund saying, wow, that's the real lean approach, and I want you to scale up. And I want you, and they bought us. Which is a good story, because, you know, it could be quite naive. And also the technology. We are, have built a lot of, of, um, of software which is really resilient. Think about, we are in, in, in a company of 70 people, we are managing, you know, in Italy we have the digital invoice, maybe in Greece also. We are managing 3 million invoices per day, which is the 35% of the invoices of the whole Italy. So, the system must be really reliable. Stress, sometimes, is high. But really, if you have a culture that is going to uh, work with you and make you stress less, serve less, <laughs> make you really uh, interchangeable, forcing you to stay home because there's a, a, um, a group of people which, which are serving you and supporting you, really is a game changer. We see on, on the metrics of, of stress. So, think about we are drawing something in our life. I draw this for you today. And uh, think about uh, to reflect every day to the impact you are creating to, and work on know, know how, why instead of working just only on know, know how. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, Francesco. Great talk. Uh, let me also mention that Francesco uh, has paid for his own expenses, to travel expenses to come out. And with, uh, with the Agile crew, they've also donated uh, an amount to Kivotos, well-known Kivotos to Cosmo. A very big round Thank of applause you for much. your initiative. <laughs> I hope you enjoy the next two days and your time in Athens. Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you to all for your passion.